Folks, we do apologize at a little technical difficulty, but we're all good now. We're here in, I believe, round number three yes. of the New England Junior Welterweight title bout. Oscar Bonilla and Stacey Anderson. And as you can probably tell from the crowd reaction, this has been a good one. It's been mostly Bonilla. And he's got Anderson backed up to the ropes once again. Yeah. Well, it's only a matter of I mean, it's like I'm watching the first two now. rounds all over. Oscar Bonilla is in tremendous shape for this fight. To put on that kind of pressure all, all these rounds, you got to be in good shape for that. Definitely. And you can definitely tell the training, the mental, not just like the training, but not just like the physical, but the mental preparation as well. Yeah. Just to like prepare yourself to get into like these fights to go toe to toe, like get your mind straight. It's hard and people think that it's just all about training, but no, it's literally no, it's, mentally, it's, physically, it's emotionally, mental and work. just a lot. A lot of mental and emotional There's work. so much to think about in a boxing match. It's not just raw power. Good body shot there by Bonilla. And another one right, right up into the, right up into the kidney area again. Just... Good counter by Anderson. So what is it what does Anderson have to adjust to to turn this thing around? What's what's maybe something you're seeing that he could take advantage of on Bonilla at this point? Um, at if this, there is anything. At this, yeah, at this point right now, he really just let him get uh, let himself get gassed out with uh, the uh, the constant pressure with Oscar Bonilla. But if I was in his shoes, I would definitely try to uh, be aggressive with the aggressor at this point. Um, he has to stop going back on his back foot and see how he, see how he likes it. If uh, how see how Bonilla likes it. If he was to press Bonilla back, um, I, 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 what I can see right now is Bonilla is the aggressor, and um, the other guy has no choice but to be the aggressor on top of that because yeah. it, obviously he can't outbox him. He's just too gassed out, too tired. Yeah, and Bonilla is definitely not letting down anything. He's just going at it with the hard punches left and right. Yeah. Just trying to wear down his opponent as much as he can. You heard the thunks on those body shots. One to the left, one to the right. Yeah, the astute enough. observers in the crowd cheering. They know how much those fight, those they, hits really do they add enough. impact. They add enough. I tell you what, he, he not going to like the feeling tomorrow. I know that. Tomorrow morning when he wakes up, he's going to feel all them body shots. Yeah, and that's the thing a lot of people say is boxers, they feel these body shots today, but they actually don't. They feel it the following day. Oh, well, well, he, well he, definitely, he, he definitely knows he's getting hit today. But you have so much adrenaline going on in your body, you're more like, damn, I don't want to get hit there again. What can I do to shoot, to shoot back? You're more in survival mode. So when you're more in survival mode, you're not too worried about uh, saying ouch to a punch. But uh, when your body's relaxed and that adrenaline is gone and you wake up in the morning, definitely gonna feel those shots. Definitely. And as we get ready for round five of this bout. A little bit of hydration in the corners. Always gotta stay hydrated, especially you don't want to beat yourself by getting fatigued from dehydration. No, That's the don't. worst thing. You cr you cramp up even a little bit, and yeah. it's over. Definitely. Yeah, definitely when we weigh in, we really have to uh, focus on hydrating ourselves because sometimes we may, we may try to cut water away from our body to make weight. And uh, that's not always the healthiest thing. So right after we weigh in, we always got to make sure we get the right amount of li liquids in our body. Because it will show in the fight if we don't. Bonilla is surveying for that opening. He's... Anderson has not taken my broadcast partner Bobby Harris's advice. He's not gotten aggressive. I think he's he's got to at this point. I mean, he's he's lost the fight. To know that the, all these, all this uh, pressure from Bonilla is, uh, he's been losing the fight. 
Uh, it looks like now he's just trying to survive the rounds and not trying to win the fight. But um, there's always that one shot. You see, when every time he presses forward, something happens. Yep. Every time Anderson throws punches, moving forward, something good happens for him. It's just, just those punches that are accumulating over the rounds, it's taking a lot out of him. He doesn't have the same confidence no. that he did in the first round to throw those shots. Definitely not. He's definitely, you definitely see him trying to look for that just opening, any opening that he can get just to get that one shot that he needs. Yeah. But Oscar Bonilla is not oh, letting man. it down. He's, he's on the like ropes. Him. See, he just continue that. body shots. You gotta keep right. that tree down. Sometimes oh, all you can do in the ropes is just punch back and fight and try to get out of there as fast as you can. And, the, and, and Anderson is not really throwing very effective shots because Oscar Bonier is so good at smothering him, he has no room to shoot. <laughs> Bonilla really just continuing to control things. This is. I know I'm repeating myself, but I mean, it has literally been five rounds of the same exact thing over yeah. and over. Literally. It's I just to give Anderson um, props, though, by staying in this, this fight this long because he is taking those hard body shots, and you definitely tell that his energy is drained, and he's just running on pure adrenaline right now. So I definitely give him props for standing along this. And, and, yeah. and not only the body shots, but the shots to the arms as well that Oscar Bonilla has been landing on him. That takes a huge toll in the reflexes out of your arms, and it takes a lot of the confidence out of, you, out of your punches. And when you don't want to punch your confidence, you don't want to punch at all. And there goes Stacey Anderson with a nice connect. Every time, every time he moves forward and throws, throws shots, he makes something happen for himself. But unfortunately uh, for him, Oscar Bonilla already took advantage of the first half of the round, half the first half of the fight, and it has nothing left in him. Looks like he's just here to survive now. Oscar Bonilla should have this in the bag. Definitely. As round five is over, we are getting ready for round number six. So a, a quite of a longer round match this time around. Last time we had five rounds. This one is six rounds. I think the last one was supposed to be six. It just obviously never got there. Rejoining us now, too, by the way, Ayer Asante out of Holy Cross. What's up? Good to have you back in here, Ayer. And Great to be here. You've been, you've been kind of just observing. What, what's your take on what you've seen so far in these five rounds? These five rounds, I'd say, uh, I kind of agree with what you, what you were saying. Like, each round has kind of been the exact same. Um, I'm really interested to see what, what happens in this last one. You know, uh, you know, Within the first couple of rounds, you kind of have the idea that, you know, there are more to come. And with this last round, there's nothing left. You know, they got to empty, empty the tank. So, uh, really very the interested to see in how both of them attack this. I mean... I'll tell you what, Oscar Bonilla is going for the kill here. Yeah, Look at this. this I'm going the clip. Knockout, and I yeah, think he's going to he make it happen. He definitely wants to get that decision. And I think he's going to make it happen. He does not want this fight to go to decision. He wants to go home and champion and say he knocked this guy out. Whether he wins on the judge's card or he does land the knockout, I mean, he's earned this, though. He is clearly the superior fighter tonight. Definitely. He's definitely had the upper hand advantage this whole fight from beginning to finish. It was a shout-out. And, and like we said in the, one of the earlier fights, the only thing you don't want to do is when you're going for that knockout to leave yourself open and take that one shot because it would be a tragedy at this point if he were to were to eat one and lose yeah. that way. And just yeah. speaking about that, he just ate one right now with the shot. right hook to the jab. Yeah, I was got to stay shut. Now we got the referee checking if this guy still wants to fight. Because his attitude says he wants no part of Oscar Bonilla. Oh, what an amazing That fight. was a loud body shot. Oh, another body shot. Now Oscar Bonilla is trying to go for broke. I wouldn't be surprised he has a broken rib after this, but taking all those low body shots. Yeah, I don't know how he's doing. Yeah, this is it. It's an impressive amount of, of stamina and impressive know. level of resolve, but resilience, stamina, and adrenaline. Yeah, for sure. Oh, another one. Woof. Gotta watch out with those silly shots. You got to stay sharp. Yep. This so, being the last round, this is the last round. 
might, it might, it might, might bring something out of Couple, it. Gotta make all your shots count right now. Couple more good ones there. Now he's going up high. He's just like, I want to finish this. Yeah. Good to the body again. I mean, just... This is the most aggressive we've seen him, which is, again, you know, like you said, it's clear he wants to win this by knockout, but... He, he has proven himself. I don't think anybody could see this and... Oh! oh right here, right here. Could see this and, and doubt his ability. He's enjoy himself now. Yeah. The work is already done. The thing with Oscar is he is an aggressive fighter no matter where you put it from the beginning to the finish. He's just going to show you that he's ready to fight with the he, toughest of the tough. He likes to fight. That's, that's the thing. Final 10. Oscar Bonilla wants to close out with a The crowd is getting wild now as the last few seconds. And this fight is over. And all class from Stacey Anderson goes over to the opposing corner, shakes hands with the manager, with the staff over there. It, it's, that's incredible to me, but it shouldn't be surprising. You know, you, you see this in sports. Teams spend, however, you know, 18 minutes here or 60 minutes in a hockey game trying to tear each other's heads off. And then when it's over, it's over. And you can separate the aggression and the adrenaline from the human being that's on the other side. It's and crazy, that level of respect, it, it, it's, it's incredible. Crazy, isn't it, how you can shut it on, on and off. How you yeah. can shut that on and off. That switch. I still, I've been boxing for a lot of time, for a long time now, and I still get, you know, uh, a shock from that. How I'm able to, you know, turn on and off that switch. I got to imagine that's a thing for you too, I hear that, that oh, switch boy. when the game ends. And you're going through shaking hands with your opponent, you know, a DB that's been on you all game long, and now you realize, oh, it's just another guy. I mean, I, I definitely think so. When you play a violent sport, you have to understand that, like, that you have to respect the competitor. You know what I mean? I just, like you said, when you're between those white lines, it's, it's me or you, and you're always yep. going to go with me. But, uh, so really quick, yeah. they're announcing the winners right now, so let's... From the beginning, that Oscar yep. was gonna win this bout. Just the way he just came out, all poised, aggressive, didn't lay back, just gave it to his opponent. So well and the earned uh, championship fight for Oscar Bonilla. And the way he finished it too. I mean, that sixth round, he didn't just pack it in. He went for it. And he, but he went for it in a smart way. He never really left himself vulnerable. He landed some of his biggest shots, but he showcased. Beyond just his victory tonight, he showcased his skill as a complete boxer. And what you saw was a man who is ready for that next step. Which is always a great win. Always a great win. Uh, he got to always, be, like you always said, a great win yeah. and always a great feeling to do it for your brother. Yeah, and that's that goes back to what we were talking about before. It's so important. You're seeing it up there now. That banner, the belt, what a moment. Yeah. And really quick, since we have a little time before our next bout, I just want to say that News Talk New England does not just cover sports. We also cover community events and political events wherever we can get an opportunity. This past week or two weeks, we had the opportunity to be in Brockton, Massachusetts for PAC Global's Youth Health Summit Awareness. And what a great event it was from just the health awareness advocates to all the mental awareness. It's always good to go out and talk to the youth about mental health awareness because it's something that we don't talk about nowadays. Yeah. It's really hard and people talk about mental awareness, mental health, it's just a sensitive subject. And for them to go out there, talk about that, bring some youth and 
just, you know, tell them their stories of how they manage it and go through it. It was a great event. I do want to give a shout out to Pack Global People Affecting Community Change in Brockton, Massachusetts. They are having their grand opening of their two official buildings, I believe, in June. So we'll definitely be there for the grand opening. But again, shout out to Pack Global and everything that Jamal Gooding does for them. Yeah, it's such an important thing. I mean, working in college sports, you know, you see the stress these athletes are under. You know, I, th I think right now of Lauren Burnett, who was a catcher for James Madison University softball. I think brother. No longer with us. One day after being named Player of the Week in her conference, you know, you just never know, and that that mental health aspect is so important. Very important. You know, and it's one thing to say, you know, a lot of more recognition than what it does. I feel like people are overlooking mental health a lot nowadays and saying, "Oh, well, this guy just needs to get it together." And this the mental health is a very serious thing. It's very real. Yeah. As the ring announcer acknowledges and recognizes Jose Antonio Rivera for putting on this amazing show, we definitely just gotta give a shout out from News Talk New England to RPE Jose Antonio Rivera and Jose Rivera and AJ Rivera. They're always putting on a great show and never disappoint. And a huge shout out to Bobby Harris for joining us these last few bouts after a great bout of his own. I mean, I tell you, I don't know how. I don't know how he keeps himself discomposed after after going through a fight like he did. I know he my gets, hats up, my hats off. I, you know, seeing what you know, knowing what my athletes go through here at AIC, you know, for, to be able to just flip that switch and sit down over here and, I mean, man, and so easily how yeah. he flips that switch. Like he goes from literally fight mode, commentator mode, just like that. Yeah. And and the insight is so valuable having. Having somebody who knows it, who does it, you know, I, I try to get athletes on with me when I commentate. You know, I've had some of my softball players do baseball games with me. I've had some of, you know, my men's soccer players work the women's soccer games with me. And that value of that insight, you know, it, it's one thing to watch it and to, and to know it from that side. You know, I've like, I've been watching hockey, let's say, so, you know, since I was knee high to Yoda. But to have somebody who's done it and who's been in it, for that long, I mean, you just you learn. It's like it's like being a sponge, just soaking up everything you can. And one one experience that I've been lucky enough to have here is to work with Ronnie Nunn, former NBA director of officiating for you know, NBA official for 25 years, did the finals, was director of officiating for almost a decade. You know, spend three days with that man and learn more about the sport of basketball than I knew in my whole life. So again, Bobby Harris, shout out. Great fight tonight. As you said, might have been the knockout of the night. And coming over here doing this with us, what, well, we a, can't what say a treat. It might have been the knockout of the night. It could, but we also have this main event coming up soon with Popeye yeah. Rich Rivera. And let me tell you, he has a good knockout punch too, so we definitely can't sleep on him. No. But for sure, the top one right now. I was going to say, in, in, Bobby Harris, in, the third. In the lead through 10 of 12. Definitely, for sure. But again, it's who's in the lead after 12, right? Those, those rounds. And, and the, you know, the, the main events on this card, Popeye Rivera and Fidel Munoz, light heavyweight title bout, and then Kendrick Ball and Ronald Montez. I mean, we are in for, you think you've been entertained through these first 10? Well, you have. Yeah. Yeah. But we are in for two yeah, real good for ones here. Well, the co-main event is coming up right now. We got Richard Popeye Rivera, very entertaining fighter versus Miguel Munoz from Colombia, and another title is on the line. And speaking of 
give uh, Popeye another Connecticut-born fighter. Yeah, Again, all these Connecticut fighters coming out, trying to show their stuff. Yeah, we, we talked a little bit earlier about Western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts and that chip on your shoulder. If anybody's got as big of a chip on their shoulder as those of us from the 413, it's the 860. And, and I'm going to just throw another little thing out there. I grew up a Hartford Whalers fan. I'll tell you what, the state of Connecticut is still mad about that. 25 years later. It was just the 25th anniversary earlier this month of them moving. Or the final game. So as we get ready for this next belt. And look at that belt out there. You can see it. It is a thing of beauty. And that's, that's what every fire looks for, is the eye on the prize. I've, I've had it. I've had chances, thanks to some of my teams here at AIC, to lift some, lift some trophies. And there is no feeling like getting your hands on that trophy, getting that belt put on you. The feeling, indescribable. Same thing, like you said, getting that trophy, that chip, that hardware. Like all the work that we put in when I worked for the Massachusetts Cards in 2021 it was just a great feeling to see all the hard work dedication that we put from just year 2018 to actually winning the ifl 2021 championship out in arizona and yeah. just holding that trophy when they brought it back it was just like wow this is what it was all worth all the long hours hard work people not seeing anything no yeah. that, that's what it was all about and it was one of the moments i would definitely hold for life yeah it just I got real lucky with our hockey team this year. Conference championship in Utica, New York. We did a fabulous job hosting it, by the way. Shout out to my guy, Ray Biggs, the uh, sports information director over in Utica. Won the championship on my birthday. How's that for a birthday present, That's huh? That's a great birthday present. I wish I could win the championship on my birthday. Yeah, I, Parker Revering, our captain, hands me the trophy, says not a bad birthday, huh? Yeah. Not at all. Thing, things you never forget. No, definitely. You, you know, and and like I said, you know, we've been lucky here at AIC. I mean, cross-country men and women, conference champions, regional champions, ice hockey, conference champions, you know, the National Intercollegiate Rugby Association champions and our women's rugby team, our women's indoor track team champions of their conference. We had a national champion in the mile in indoor, Callum Elson. Who, who, by the way, earlier in the season ran a 359 mile. Wow. Sub four. That's impressive. At Division two. That's impressive. Maybe soon we'll see him at Division one. Well, he's, he's graduating, so he's oh. done. But And you know what? But well, hopefully he continues. Oh, he'll continue. What he does in the near future. And oh, absolutely. Well, and I will tell you this. He was down at the Penn Relays this weekend, ran the 5K on Thursday. He was one of only five or six runners who wasn't Division One in that field. Six, I think it was sixty-one Division One runners. He finished third. Wow! It it just it does oh, not matter. Hard work it's and dedication, effort, commitment, and a good team of coaches around you, and a good good team of teammates around you. That's exactly what Bobby Harris talked about earlier on and now Popeye Rivera Fidel Munoz these guys have good teams around them that's why they're fighting for a championship belt the co-main event here tonight and this is what the people came to see you see those belts parading around The best part of this too, John, it's not just about the fight, it's the show, the whole event. That's why they call it an event, right? Yeah. And, and just look at the outfit that Popeye Oh had. my God. Raising the red outfit with the Popeye sailor hat, the red gloves. He is going all out. Bringing me back to my days of watching videos of Ric Flair. Like, that's what this reminds me of right now, the Ric nature Flair boy. like, woo! He is 
rocking it. I mean, I cannot rock sequins like that. That is fabulous. Definitely. And as we take a moment to hear the announcer announce the fighters. Fidel Munoz, 69 professional fights. This is a, certainly an experience, is not a question. Crowd support for Popeye is just amazing as they announced him. Again, Connecticut bringing in their fans, supports. They always, they always bring it. And not a whole lot of people sitting right now for this one. Oh, definitely not. And for the people that actually didn't hear it at home, Popeye Richie Rivera is a cruiserweight division, hometown in Hartford, Connecticut. He is 6-0. and oh. No, he is 6 feet. And his stance fighting is orthodox. So he's a little different. And his streak is 21 wins, zero losses, with 16 KOs and zero draws. So that's definitely a record right there. Yeah, I mean, anytime, anytime the loss column's got a bagel in it, you're doing something right. Definitely. And 16 out of 21 knockouts, I mean, that is just domination. But he's facing an experienced opponent in Munoz who's... Not just going to lay down. 69 professional fights, as like we said. So he's seen a lot. He's going to be well prepared. I don't expect this to be easy. No, I definitely don't either. I don't see this going to the decision. I see Popeye and, definitely and, knocking this guy out. Give him a couple rounds. Popeye looking for that big, big left. Oh, and there's a big, big left on the other side. Yep. See, you can't sleep on Popeye's opponent. You definitely can't. Now, Fidel Munoz is certainly going to give, give a challenge. But Popeye... A flamboyant style of fighter, but an effective style, obviously, based on that record. Ducking out of the way. And he does it with ease, too. Just blocking, defending, just trying to not get hit. He's going to have to because it looks like Munoz has got a little bit of a reach advantage, a little bit longer. Yep. So you've got to be careful to stay out of range of that. You don't want to get caught because it does really only take one. Big swings. And just hear the silence of the crowd. Literally no one's talking. They're literally just watching this. Except for that one guy. <laughs> but no, you're right. I mean, the, in the intensity right now is you're just, you're waiting. It's like when the clouds roll in and you're waiting for the storm to break. Good big shot there. Every time Popeye lands a blow, you hear the crowd cheering, just like right now, see what well, saying. As soon as he goes in for it. Another big one there. Body shot. Munoz is a very patient fighter, you can tell. I mean, he's not, he's not getting baited into anything by Popeye. Just being smart and taking advantage of the opportunities that are in front of him. A saw, I mean, Popeye won that round, but not 
handily. And Munoz did some good things there, and he's setting this, himself up to go the distance. Definitely. A good. Good first round so far. A solid, solid first round. You can definitely tell both fighters right now are holding back. They're just waiting for that one shot. Yeah, that was not that was not sixth gear. I'm not even sure that was out of second gear, honestly, no, for either of those guys. They had a couple flurries early, but really that was that feeling out process and you never want to get caught. Second round now about to be underway as the fighters come in back into the middle of the ring. And I think the feeling out process is done. I think we're going to see a lot more action the rest of the way here. Oh, definitely. I definitely agree with you. And both these guys leading with the left. It's interesting. You don't yeah. see a lot of left against left. You know, no, usually no. there's one at the most as down to a knee is. Munoz, but sometimes even too the fighters when they're walking around, you definitely see when they're on the mat, they're de definitely tripping a lot. So they definitely got to watch out. They don't want to roll their ankle. We actually had last fight at Western Town Hall. A fighter was fighting some, with somebody, and they had to call in the first round because the fighter did a move and he rolled his ankle. Oh and no! The trainer called it. So I mean, they definitely got to watch out when they're moving their feet because they definitely want to roll an ankle. Yeah, I mean, that footwork, we talked about it earlier. It's so important to a boxer to be able to to stay on balance. I mean, so much of the punch power isn't in the arms. It's just like a pitcher in baseball. It's all in the legs and that, that torque that you get up through the trunk. That's how you land those big punches. If it's all arm, you're not going to do a whole lot. Right, I totally agree with you. You've got to be able to connect all of those muscles into that to that shot. You see Popeye trying to to trying get to that hook. Oh. oh, and look at that. He that just, was that was the one. He was literally waiting for his opponent to make one certain move and he connected right there on him. That was a hard hard right. Hand. Joining us now is Bonilla, Oscar Bonilla. Oscar, really glad to have you on here. As another knockdown. Yep. And the referee is starting the countdown, trying to make sure that the <laughs> fighter can get his composure again, and he stands up before the 10 count. Referee's making sure that he's still able to fight in this, and he is. Popeye is back, and Popeye is ready to hard swing it. Again, Popeye with that orthodox technique that he always fights with. And that power left jab that he's always going with. Now, I think I think this is gonna this isn't gonna get out of this round the way this is looking right now. Popeye's got he's He's just toying with him now. And what a jab right from his opponent, really. That's the end of the round. Oscar Bonilla, as we mentioned, joining us in Oscar. First of all, congratulations on thank a great you, win. Uh, tremendous fight. You know, you controlled the center or the ring. Was that the game plan going in? I mean, uh, I know he was a veteran. I mean, this guy's fought. I mean, I seen his background, and I, I was looking at his... Uh, his opponents, and uh, I feel very, very honored to be in the ring with that man. That man for Devin Haney. I mean, Devin Haney is world champion right now. You know, so, I mean, it, it, it feels good to get a win over him. And how does it feel having that support of your brother in there with you in that ring? My brother's in there every single time I go in that ring now. My brother was always there before, physically. Now he's, he's inside of me. Now it's, it, it, like I said last time, my last fight, December 18th, they asked about um, how, how did I feel fighting, and I said, I think it's impossible to get beat when you're fighting two men, because it's me and my brother. Yeah. When I want to give up, my brother's like, no, let's go. 
Definitely. Yep. As we get this next round underway, Popeye comes out again <coughs> with the one-two pow. What we've seen tonight, Oscar, is just been tremendous. Um, your thoughts, I guess, on the whole the the event that has been here that you were part partaking in, obviously as a participant. Just everything you've seen so far tonight. I mean, I I, I feel. It feels good to know that, in all honesty, I think I had the toughest opponent in the night. I think I had the toughest opponent of the night. Everybody else, they've been walking through these opponents like nothing. My opponent is a veteran, so it makes me feel good. You know, and, and, and I even told my trainer, I felt tired. And he said that it, it, it was good. It was good that, that, I, that I got tired like that. I showed that I got what it takes. And as we're talking really quick, Popeye has him down really quick and he gets right back up I gotta I gotta tell you I credit to Fidel Munoz for staying in this I mean that's the third time he's gotten knocked down again just another connection right to the side of the head by Popeye that dangerous left hook that he has that is a weapon for sure another knockout and another knockout punch really quick by Popeye he is on the ropes I think the referee's got to stop this. I mean, this is clearly this is clearly decided. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to see somebody get hurt unnecessarily. You definitely don't want someone getting hurt, getting a concussion. The referee has called this yep. out fight. Yeah. That. It had to be. I mean, four, be. four knockdowns. It, it's over. He was clearly, you know, credit Fidel Munoz for wanting to continue. You know, Oscar, like you talked about the resiliency. Obviously, you have to have that to be a fighter. He clearly has that, but just like you, in your fight, you were clearly the better fighter. Popeye Rivera, clearly the better fighter here in this battle. Of course. Battle. Of course he is. <laughs> that man, he deserves that win. He trains hard, and, you know, he got to keep that O. Yeah, he's 22-0 and 0 now, 17 yep. knockouts. Definitely. Want to take a quick minute to Oscar while we've got you here before they officially award the belt. You've got your your friend here. Who, tell us a little bit about this four-legged friend that's sitting here next to us. Goldo. Goldo is a, Goldo's a part of me now. Uh, I lost my brother <coughs> July 10th, and I got Goldo a couple of months after, and he's helped me out a lot so much. He keeps me busy. I love my dog. He's a part of me. I, I always... Uh, I, I never understood what a, a service dog or a companion is till now that I have my own. And I gotta say that he's helped me a lot. Definitely. And as we take a moment to hear the ring announcer's decision, and the winner unanimously is Popeye Richie Rivera with the knockout. And really quick, Oscar, we see you have a special friend over here. Do you want to tell us a little about him? Yeah, Goldo, my friend. <laughs> this is Goldo. I mean, his real name is Ocean, but uh, his nickname is Goldo. I, I love my dog. My dog, is he's my companion. Ever since I lost my brother, he's hes a part of me now. You love the purple hair that oh, matches yeah, yeah. your hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, matches my hair, yeah. <laughs> Always supporting it. That's yeah, great. He's, he just, he's goes with me to the gym every day. He goes with me everywhere. I thought I was having the most fun here, but I think he is. I know, I mean, he loves it. it. He, he got a little nervous the, in the entrance. I don't know, when I came out with Arnold Rosa, he was fine. But now that it was me coming out to fight, he got a little nervous. So, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe the first time. Well, I'll tell you what, he's... He's relaxing over here, and he can stay as long as he likes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <coughs> so Popeye's actually talking to the fans a little bit. Len. Popeye's famous catchphrase. So, Oscar, we thank you for being on today. It was a pleasure. Thank Congratulations you, on your fight win. Truly tremendous. And again, your brother's always going to be with you, wherever you thank go. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate yeah, it. Incredible. Thank you. All right, buddy. Well, John, we got one more fight. The main event, the big one. Kendrick Ball Jr., Ronald Montez. Worcester Zone, representing Massachusetts. Representing the Woo 267. Kendrick. I thought it was 508. 
It is 508. Oh, 508. So sorry. 267 is actually, I want to give a shout out to the Manny Familia Foundation, who's always giving out community stuff, always giving back. And what a great guy he was. Unfortunately, you know, it was a tragic incident what happened. But as a brave hero that he was, he did it the way he wanted to go out. And then supporting us, Manny Foundation, we have the shirts. 267 Manny Foundation shirts. So shout out to Manny Foundation for always hooking News Talk New England up. Down one more this evening. So as we get ready for the main event for Rivera Promotion Entertainment, New England's Future 9, we just want to give a thanks to all the fans that came out and supported us. We thank you guys so much. Without you, none of this would be possible from traveling from across the states, from your support. We thank you, like, this event could not be possible without you guys. The atmosphere, the energy was electric, and we can't wait to bring another RPE, Promotions Entertainment, to a town near you. I'll tell you what, I'd love to have another one right here at the Henry Batova Gymnasium, because this has been an absolute blast to be a part of. Uh, it's some incredible fights, an incredible atmosphere here in Springfield. Yeah. As a, as a, not just as an employee of AIC, you know, currently working here, but as an alum of the college, to have something special like this here means a lot. And, you know, one more tonight and hopefully many more in the future. Oh, for sure. I definitely think seeing this turn out, how successful it went, I definitely see RPE and AIC definitely uh, partnering or definitely doing something in the near future for sure. No, no doubt. I mean, this is... This has been phenomenal, and you guys have been phenomenal. This has been a blast, and looking forward to one more. And One more to go, and Kendrick Ball Jr. trying to make it happen. I, I do have to say, though, that still, I think Bobby Harris still to this point owns the knockout of the night. Like all the kudos in the world to Popeye Rivera, who was phenomenal, but you didn't, you know, he landed a lot of good shots. We'll see, because Kendrick, he's known for putting people out, too. Was, yeah, I was going to say, night -night. It, that crown won't be decided until this fight is over, but 11 out of 12, I still think Bobby Harris is... It's it's close, but I think Bobby Harris still has it. We'll see, I mean... I'll tell know, you what, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wanna, wouldn't I want to... Wouldn't want any of those men to hit me even no, once. I would definitely not want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with no, any of I'm them. No, I'm good. I like I don't my care. face and my teeth, so... Yeah. I want to keep it for the camera. I'll save the boxes for the boxes. I, I was going to say, I was going to say, there's no help in my face anyway, but man, <laughs> you know, we're already rock bottom. I don't want to start drilling. <laughs> this music kind of here was supposed to get up and dance a little bit, you know, get your little vibes going, get into it. Yeah, you want to you want to keep the energy up Spanish, in between. Very heavy Spanish crowds. So yeah. Definitely. You know, and that's and that's another beautiful thing about Springfield and the Springfield area is, is the diversity of of the community, and it, it's reflected here in the community we have at AIC. You know, I think of all the places our athletes are from. You know, we have countries near and far, practically every state in the country, but. You know, athletes from from Canada and England and France and Kenya. You know, and in the years past, we've had Japan and Austria. Actually, we still have Austria, Sweden, Finland. You know, Norway. You know, all over the world, South Africa, Brazil. Um, you know, 
Serbia. We have some Serbian athletes on our volleyball team over the years. I actually talked to a couple of your athletic athletes yesterday while we were doing the uh, the weigh-in and just setting up all of our, our production stuff. And you have a few Argentinian uh, athletes yep. too. And Argentinians. Them, and they're like, you know, they love AIC. They love the uh, diversity here. There's always different international, just different like languages, races, and everyone basically just comes here united and basically comes to like the same goal. And that's either bring a chip to AIC or just, you know, graduate from a successful college as AIC is. Yeah, no, and and the whole thing here about AIC is that you can do both. And that's the beauty of the Division II experience, too, is that balance of, of highly competitive scholarship-level athletics with the full experience of being a college student you know, our our athletic department, the GPA of all of our student athletes on average, 3.05. So these are not just kids who are just barely getting by. You know, they're graduating with honors and getting degrees and winning academic awards and doing community service. They're doing what they got to do to achieve their selves and have a successful career or whatever they want to do in the near future, for sure. Yeah. You know, I, it's... It's just incredible to me, too, to, to see that commitment out of the athletes here at AIC to, to the community, to making the world a better place as we get ready for our final bout, the main event. Here at the Matova Gym. We're going to take a quick break because Tiffany's got Popeye coming over to do an interview. So we will step back and hand it over to the champ. Tiffany Williams sitting in for Jonathan Burgos, Jose Rivera sitting in for Jermaine Ortiz. We have Ayer Asante still on the team here, co-hosting. Ayer, why did you do the introduction here? Well, uh, I'm Ayer Asante, and uh, what's name? We love watching you fight, Popeye. That was a great win. What was thank your game you, plan you. going in there? Well, honestly, my game plan was to really establish my jab, regardless of how long it was going to take. It was a 10-round bout. So I figured it was going to take a few, round, few rounds to really accumulate, accumulate myself and, and throw my jab the right way. And as soon as I started laying in that jab the way I wanted to, then I started laying in some stronger, deeper punches, trying to work the body a little bit more. Okay. Uh, how, was, how was preparing for this fight? Uh, preparing was really tough. You know, we had um, a few different opponents fall off, so I had to get down to 168, shoot back up to 190, get down to 175. We had a potential opponent at 205, so we shot back up, and this last opponent came in at 175, so we had to lose the weight. So, honestly, preparation for this fight was really tough as far as, like, my weight. I was fluctuating the whole time, so that really does a lot to your body. Yeah. Uh, it was obvious how infectious... Your presence here is uh, the crowd loved you. you know what I mean, mm -hmm. on both sides, you, you can see they were going crazy. What does it mean to you when you come here to fight and you just feel that from the crowd? Oh, man, it means the world to me because there was a time where I felt lonely. There was a time where I felt like I didn't have anybody. There was a time I didn't have nobody to turn to. And now I feel like I have so many resources. I have so many people backing me up. It really takes a village to raise a good fighter and put them in the right place. And now I'm starting to get that type of acknowledgement towards... Um, my fans, my community, my congregation at the church, everywhere, you know, so it's a blessing to have so many people behind me because it also gives me more purpose when I fight. You know, I don't go in there alone. It's no longer a me thing. It's a we thing. I have one more thing for you. So, uh, I, in the crowd, I, I did see a bunch of young young kids. I'm assuming a bunch of young fighters. Mm -hmm. so the young fighters out there, if, if there's one thing that Popeye wants to say to them, what, what would it be? 
Hey, there's a couple things I want to say to them, okay. but um, I think what's mostly important to them, for me to tell them, is that there's so much more outlets than just the streets. You know, you could stop that bull. You could you you could really get yourself into the gym. You could stay in school. You could go to um, college. Use your brain. You know, I, I'm tired of seeing kids dying at a young age due to gun violence or gang violence. I'm tired of seeing family and friends dying to overdose and drugs. Please, I'm trying to show y'all that I, I use my 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 resources to, to get me out of that habit and to become uh, a professional fighter and, and to continue on that positive path. And I hope that I can shed that type of motivation to the younger crowd so that they can find a more positive outlet. I appreciate hey, it. I, uh, I know, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I know how important your mom is to you. She's right here. Yeah, I got my mom right here. I love my mom so much. I'm telling you, when I'm with my mom, I I, I got a new sense of strength because I, I I don't I just can't go down in front in front of mama, you know. Yeah. So I just interviewed you guys down in Harvard almost a month ago, less than a month ago. Yep. And you guys both were hospitable down there. But you had a game plan when you came into this fight tonight. Mm -hmm. You had a game plan for him, mom. Did you execute that game plan tonight? I think I think there's sometimes where she gets a little um over nervous in the crowd, especially if I get hit where she felt like oh oh like you know, but you know, it, it's a part of the game, you know, but you know, I let I let her explain herself and her feelings when she's out there looking at me. How did you feel when I was out there? Yes I do, I do. He's uh, well uh, disciplined, mm -hmm. and, and I know that he can do it. So, but uh, moms always get nervous. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> uh, so I have to ask you: You're 21 and 0 now. Mm -hmm. What is next for Popeye? I want the WBC, I want the WBO, IBF, man. Y'all need to see me in Madison Square Garden. Y'all need to see me taking on the best of the best, man. I'm the best, and, and, and it, it, it was, what's sad is that the best fighters in the world, they all ducking me. They scared of me. They don't want no parts of the spinach gang, man. We out here. It's Popeye the Sailor Man Rivera, short to the finish, because I got spinach, baby. Choo, choo. Right. Let you, them know, man. We out here. If you could call out one fighter right now, one fight that you want right now, next. Who would that be? Man, I've been calling out Badu Jack for a long time, and, I, and I'll continue calling him out. But since I ain't getting a response from him, you know, I want Joe Smith. Let me get Joe Smith Jr. All right. We're going to thank you. I want to send you back. You got an enormous crowd here. Mm -hmm. Have a safe drive thank back you. to Harvard. All thank right. You, thank you so much. Don't come down and have some spinach food real quick. Hey. Yeah. Hey. I, come down I hear that. Spinach Congrats. gang. We out here. Choo-choo. Congratulations. Choo -choo. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. Thank Congrats. you. Congrats. Thank Congrats. you. Now we need to take some pictures, man. Don't be acting like that. Come here. Come here, Will. Oh, you guys were having them. Yeah, you do. But, hey, good job, man. I got to say, I mean, I'm usually with you guys, but today I'm we up the most. And as we come back after Popeye Richie Rivera's interview with us after his KO, we are here to watch Kendrick Ball's main event fight against his opponent. This is the main event of the evening and the last main event of the evening. expecting a, a good one here in the main event. We've seen, if my math is right, we've seen seven knockouts seven. Out, of, out of the 11. Seven out of 11. Which is, which is astounding. Unheard I, of, I yeah, think. Yeah. I, they've been, there have been some really good fights in there. It hasn't all been quick, but. And what I, what I seem to have noticed, and one thing I really respected was the fact that it wasn't all just I guess I would say like head knockouts. So, you know, a, yeah. lot, a couple of them were knockouts to the body. Just dudes surgically just getting into the body and working that. I think that's a whole part of the game that you know, as a as a uh, a new new time you know uh, boxing viewer, I, I'm always thinking about that. You know, what I mean, the that head big, knockout, yeah. the big the big right hook or whatever, yeah. and, and really it's yeah. really about those body shots building up. Yeah, building up to it. It's it's not. It's not one note, it's a symphony. It's a symphony, for sure. 
You know, it's, it's like in football. It's not just the go route. It's all the, exactly. the crossing gotta, routes exactly. and the slants. You got to run the ball, establish the run. Yep. All of it. There's always so much more than people realize as Montez hears the bell. A solid, solid first round. Definitely. You know, Kendrick Ball went out there a little bit. He's definitely got to pick up the pace just a little more. You know, his last bout, he wasn't too lucky. Unfortunately, you know, it didn't go in his favor. So hopefully he's looking to rebound at this main event. Yeah, certainly, all you, all you can ever ask for is the opportunity. Uh, you know that as an athlete. All you exactly. want is that, that one shot where the quarterback says, this play's going to you. Exactly. And then you just got to give it your all. And, whether you're looking to beat a cornerback, he's looking to win this bout here. Got to exactly. take what's in front of you and take the most of your opportunities. Nothing is given. Got to earn it. Got to earn it. All it can give you is opportunity. About to get our second round underway. And what do you think of the first round so far? Again, like a lot of feeling out. You could tell that these are guys that aren't just looking to go in for the for the kill 30 seconds in. You know, it's figuring out the opportunities and what the openings are. I think Montez had a slightly better round, but I don't know that that's necessarily going to continue as we go here as Kendrick Ball Jr. is really an able fighter. Oof. That's Montez with another good shot, though. For sure. Big swings. He's going for it. He's starting to connect. He's starting to find that, that rhythm. I find that range, that the, timing. Like you said, that first round, oh, you kind of feel it out. Oh. He staggered him a little bit with that shot. Great counter. We've seen a few fighters try to win with counter punching. That might have been the best counter of the night. For right sure. There. Definitely, just, yeah. Oh, big one. Another he just big caught one. a big right one to the side of the hill on the right side with the right hand. I think it got the shoulder first, which is fortunate, because if that had gotten all head, Montez might not be standing up right now. But it was slowed down, hit off the shoulder. It still doesn't feel good, but could have been a lot worse. I think he knows that. Woo! Another big flurry. This time Montez the one landing it. Body shots. I'll tell you what, I don't know which one of these two is going to do it. This fight's ending in a knockout. This is not going to the I park. was just thinking the one same thing. One of these guys is going to one of these guys is going to land one, and the other guy's gonna be on his back wondering what planet he's on. Definitely. Kendrick's definitely gotta keep it consistent and just keep being more on the aggressive side instead of being more on the defensive side. A couple a couple good ones again by Montez. He's been Outstanding to this point. I know we're only five minutes into to an eight round bout they announced too, so this could go a while. Uh, definitely. I don't think it will get there. Not the way these guys are swinging. But it's boxing, so you never know. Yeah. We'll never see what know. happens. You never know. Yeah. All it takes it, is one one punch. Yeah. It could go to it could go the full twenty four minutes. It could be over in five seconds. That's the beauty of it though. Yeah, it's, that's the fun. It's not like in football when the other team scores, you have another chance to go down the field and score. Exactly. It's literally when you get that one shot knockout, that's it. There's no more redos. It's, it's, that's the final decision. It's like, exactly. it's, like, it's like starting in overtime. Starting in overtime, exactly. Literally. That's a... As the bell. Oh, oh right. and then you oh, see Monty at the bell hits ball. But you did see, I mean, he had his motion already going before the bell came, so there's no way he could stop that. I don't think yeah, that, the, I don't the, think the that was Yeah, the referee giving him a talk, too, but I don't think he's going to, I don't think they're going to dock him a point, although he is over there talking to the judges, so. Yeah, I mean, I again, that's so close that I don't think you can, you can dig him for it. Certainly you do need to, obviously, warn him to be careful because that's obviously a defenseless fighter at that point. Definitely, yeah. 
And you see his coach over there, who's actually his dad, who used to be a fighter too. He's actually prep talking him, giving him a little coaching advice. Trying to just make sure that he's in the game, that he's focused and knows what the mission is. Or the assignment. We're still early, you know, it's incredible thinking. You know, the, the, the bout's on the undercard. We would be halfway through. We're only at the quarter pole of this one. Exactly. Six rounds still to go. So these guys have already gone for six minutes and now they've got still 18 left. Some big shots. And that's where that energy and that uh, reserve tank is going to need. They're going to need to be able to preserve most of their energy because these late rounds, it's, it's going to get tiring and it's going to get to them. Ball with a couple of good body shots. Ducks out of the way of a big one. Ooh. I love how Ball has that little jab step too. Yeah. He fakes it and tries to hit him with the other arm. And it's kind of like watching a basketball player. That little, that little, fake, that little fake step. to get the defender just out yeah. of position. Because really, again, what you're doing is you're disrupting the rhythm. You're taking them off balance a little bit, and that allows you to have the better opportunity. Definitely. You know, it's, it's timing, but it's also disrupting your opponent's timing. That one little hesitant move no. can make a difference. 100%. Just like in football, you make one move, your defender, it's you over. can be out in the backfield already. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Big shot there. Some measured jabs. Oof. Oof. And that's a sh good sharp left. You know, Montez really, that short range left is so dangerous because it's not usually the punch guys throw. There's a hard Ooh, one up high. Looked like it hurt. <laughs> Tell you what, these guys are taking a beating. Yeah. They're, they're giving it and they're taking it. and I, I'm impressed. And, and not even flinching. Definitely not. I, I would already be crying. <laughs> That's why I'm over here. Exactly. <laughs> it's like I, I often say, you know, my hat's off to any athlete, because any, anything that you can do, it's just <laughs> incredible. Definitely. Just to be able to go in a ring and go toe to toe with like Anybody, some of the bro. best in like in the state or the world. Oh. Yeah. Mm. And some heavy shots here. I mean, that's that's an accomplishment in itself. Just even getting in there. Yeah. Especially at this level when you're fighting for for a title. Exactly. Yeah. And this has been the heaviest fight as you see some high shots here. I mean, you know, we've seen some big knockout like the the one punch finals. Yeah. But I mean, just the the weight of every shot in this fight seems to be heavier. It's louder. That that slap is is stronger. These guys are hammering each other right now. And then just you know, it's like it's too, like watching two brick walls punch each other. You can hear it. Yeah, you can. You can. You really can hear definitely it. hear those body blows. Down to the final ten. Oh, a late. A late jab straight to the nose. That's that might be the first round. I think Montez won the first two rounds. I think I think Ball won that round. I have to agree with you on that. Definitely Montez had the uh, upper hand the first two round, the first few rounds, but the third round it was definitely Kendrick Ball. So I guess I guess here's the question. I mean, with it with it being the main event we get to we get to the end of eight and they've each won four rounds then what do we still just call it a draw or how, how do they go i mean if they go all the way to the eighth round it I'd basically comes down i'd be surprised too but it might come down to a judge's decision depending so i mean we'll see what happens i mean so far there's been Fights that have been called early because of medical reasons or just because fighters are just not here, coherent. So, I mean, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, we're still obviously 15 minutes away from that. I'm but. saying eight rounds is a lot. Yeah, uh. For the way these guys are going, I don't think we'll get there as Montez then, landed some good shots early on. And Just like we mentioned earlier, those, those, those body blows, right? Along with doing, like, heavy damage, they definitely weigh in on the fighter's stamina. Mm -hmm. 
you know, uh, you know, a bunch of vital organs in there. So uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you've had games where you've gotten popped by a cornerback in the first quarter, and that's then in the fourth, you're feeling it. That's the some of the worst hits are you know the ones where you don't have pads you know, on, the, on the ribs. You know what I mean? Stomach. Those those ones you feel for not only the rest of the game, but for a couple weeks. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like that's it's not easy. It doesn't does not go away. Yeah, like it just builds up. It's a good shot by Montez there. Short short left again. Both these guys have used it. And as I'm watching this fight, I can still see the support of fans that Popeye Richie Rivera has, just taking pictures with him, having a good time after his fight. And that's the thing about Popeye, he always has fun with his fans after the fight, no matter how long it takes him. He'll say hello to everybody if he has to. I, I would say no matter the result, but he hasn't had a result that isn't a win. 17 <laughs> knockouts, 22-0, and 0, so, you know. What an amazing record. Yeah, unbelievable. What a, what a treat to get to witness that. And... Um, Big, big response, Montez, with another Ooh. big counter and another one, and that left again. This is go-to right now. Yeah, I mean, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Exactly. You know, just if he's gonna give that to you all night, take it. Why not? More shots. Montez is starting to build up again. I mean, he has been, I said ball won the last round. Montez is clearly taking oh. control back, although he just took one right to the forehead there. And another good combination. I'm kind of interested to oh. see how these judges are scoring it. Are yeah. they looking for that clean blow where they hear that glove hitting the body? Look out. That's a big shot for for ball and a big combination in return by Montez and those body shots these guys are not kidding around I'll tell you what a little underneath step Ball now coming coming in, and there's the bell. Montez won that round, but Ball, I mean... Ball kept his composure. Yeah, he, he kept it in there. I mean, you know, he had a few good connections. Yeah, I mean, he landed his shots, too. And how are we only halfway through this? I don't I mean, even know. Is, how are these guys still standing after four, and they got to do it again? Again. It's, 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 the, it's Compliment. again. Compliment. Shout out. Tremendous like athletes they are, just elite and physical. The physical demeanor and just toll that these the human body can take. It can't take that much toll. And the way that they're they're just, they're proving it wrong. Yeah, this is this is astonishing to me. And again it goes back five here We're at underway. the Potova Gym in our main event. Kendrick Ball Jr. and Ronald Montez. Montez in the blue again and Ball in the black. And a big shot by Ball. You can tell these guys are getting tired because the defenses are getting a little shaky. I was just going to say, it's, Seth, It's yep. been more about countering and, and taking one to give one than it has been about blocking and absorbing. And that's why I don't think this one's going to last the full eight because at some point someone's going to get caught. Definitely. Montez just caught ball there. You can, see, you can see him buckle a little bit. Ball coming back with those jabs. They're, they're, there. they're there for both of these guys, and I think it's just a matter of to a degree, almost, get, who gets lucky and actually just has one fully cleanly connect. They yeah. hit each other hard, but just missing there, too. But which one is going to get that the... punch that's going to seal it? Ball went down. Oh, boy. They're going to check in with Montez's, or with Ball's corner. Uh, 
conversation on both sides here now. I'm not entirely sure what. I think the referee is just making sure that Kendrick Ball is good, but he's also telling him that he did hit him in the back of the head when he turned around, and that's a definitely you can definitely do that. Yeah, one point deduction. I saw the signal. Yep. You hit. Then, ooh, oh, there they go. They're going right back to left with the jabs. Oh, oh, oh! oh, oh he's, he's out. out. He's out. He's out. It's it's over. Over. With the right, the left, and he called it. He just knocked him out. But is it going to be enough? The referee is starting the count. He is slowly getting up. I thought he was out. He no, like he was out. He, he's getting up. He. It looks like he's still going to continue. Let's see. Wow. Wow, what a turnaround for Kendrick Ball, though. He had been dropped to one knee. I Is it over? The Did bell. they call it? I don't know. I don't think I saw the 10 count. I didn't hear the bell. I didn't hear a bell either, so we're just waiting for the official. I don't know. The only thing I can think of, we talked about the one-point deduction on Montez for the hit to the back of the head. Did Ball get Montez in the back of the head there with that as he was going down? Because if you knock your opponent out doing that, you're DQ. Yeah, definitely. I think Is that's that what, what might have happened here. And I think that's what the trainers and the doctors are looking at right now, making sure that he's okay, that he doesn't have a concussion, and that he's coherent. But we're just seeing really quick. But it looks like they're, they're taking, taking off the gloves, the gloves off. off for Kendrick Ball, and they're going to call this one, I believe. Yeah, I'm curious to see what the call is on this. Because Montez was winning that fight. And he got Ball down to a knee and he got him in the back of the head. And then Ball came back and that battle in the corner landed a couple shots. And as, and as Montez went down, he swung around and it looked, did look to me like he got him in the back of the head. It definitely did look like that. The doctors are still checking him to make sure he's okay. And I think we have our yep. They did ring the bell. The thing is, was that punch legal or not legal? Because he did look like he punched him in the back of the head. It and it looks like they called it. Kendrick yeah. Ball Jr. With the knockout. With the knockout. It did look like his opponent did have the upper hand at first. Yeah. But then Kendrick Ball just came out firing at all cylinders with that jab, that one-two power, and yeah, knocked I his point right down to the mat. Yeah, when, you know, like we said, we knew at some point they were going to go in, and it was just who was going to get that one shot. When Montez knocked Ball down, I thought, oh boy, this is it. But instead, they turned the other way, and it's, and it's Ball landing the kill shot, the knockout. What a finish. What a fight. What a main event. Definitely, Seth. I definitely have to agree with you that. Now I'm talking about you. But we did talk about the knockout of the day. I think that knockout would topped it all. I don't know. You know I, I think because... You, know, you might be right. I, it's very close, I'll tell you that. Because that Bobby Harris knockout was a thing of beauty. Yeah, It was a more pure knockout. That was a flurry... And a furious finish, and I mean, that's like, it's almost like asking you, is Picasso or Rembrandt the better painter? Like, what's the difference? Right. So so maybe we had co-main events, we can have co-knockout of the night. Because, I mean, I just two very different kinds of knockouts. And I, you know, I think we're kind of comparing apples to oranges with them. Definitely, definitely. So, again... The win by knockout in the fifth round at 218. In our main event, Kendrick Ball Jr., the winner, won a night here at the Henry Patova Gymnasium. I want to thank everybody for what for an incredible event. Yes. I definitely want to thank our special guest commentary, Jermaine the Technician Ortiz. Worcester's own rising star. And I also want to thank Ayer Asante, wide receiver from Holy Cross Crusaders. We definitely appreciate you guys coming on today's show. We definitely look forward to another event and good luck forward to this season. So as we wrap up this 
main event and this event. I just want to say, Seth, it was an honor and pleasure working with you and commentating on the mic with you today. And what an event it was. Oh, this was incredible, John. Like I said, I've never done, never done boxing before. We've never had it on our campus before. So what a special privilege it was to get to be part of it. I'm grateful you guys gave me the opportunity to join in. You know, another box to check off. And what, what a day. What a fun day here at AIC. We saw two walk-off wins from baseball and softball. We saw an incredible boxing event. Just a special day. Really grateful to be part of it. Oh, definitely. And again, we appreciate you being on with us. Again, we hope we definitely can come out to AIC, American International College in Springfield, Massachusetts, for possibly the next Rivera Promotions Entertainment, but maybe for the New England's future 10 title. Hey, we're here. Make it happen. We love this. We love the venue, and I think the fans enjoyed it too. To be totally honest with you, the electric that was here, just the cheering from everything, it was it was a sold out crowd for sure. Definitely a sold oh, out yeah, crowd. They, they filled the Silver Gym. It's a really an incredible night here, and you know, we've had some special things in here over the course of this year. The volleyball team won the conference championship here. You know, so another championship event here at the Patova Gym. Really grateful to be part of it. Like Definitely. I said, this is just a blast. And well done. Yes. Well done by everybody involved from top to bottom. Definitely. So I just want to say from News Talk New England, I am your host, Jonathan Burgos, alongside my special guest host, Seth Dussault, from AIC College. And once again, we are here for the Rivera Promotions Entertainment New England's Future 9. What a great event it was. So we thank you everyone who came out and enjoyed it. It was definitely one for the ages. Your support is great. And we hope to definitely see you for Rivera Promotions Entertainment New England's Future 10 bout. Hopefully coming soon to a town near you. And just for everybody to say, we hope you guys drive safe and have a good night from News Talk New England. Remember, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be yourself. Good night, everybody. Take care, everyone.